Hello. Have you ever wanted to be in a club? You know, like when you were a kid and somebody had a cool tree house with all the cool stuff in it. Well, I'm part of a club I don't want to be in. The APOE4 Club. Yes, I tested positive for one of two possible copies of the APOE4 gene variant. This means that I'm at increased risk for developing late onset Alzheimer's disease by the time I'm 85. Other people experience this too, including prominent ones like Chris Helmsworth. In case you don't know, he's the super cute Australian actor who has played Thor and superheroes in big movies. He recently revealed that he has two copies of that same gene variant, which increases his risk for Alzheimer's disease even more. So we're in this club, but it doesn't mean that I get to hang out with Chris or that we're both gonna develop memory problems or even get Alzheimer's disease. Today, we'll talk about six lifestyle habits that are related to slowed memory decline and preventing dementia. I can't wait. So let's get right to it. Even if you're in the APOE4 club, there are things that we can do to reduce our risk of dementia. There was a study published in the last month in one of the world's oldest peer-reviewed medical journals, the BMJ, or British Medical Journal. The researchers studied almost 30,000 people in a study known as the China Cognition and Aging Study. It considered genetic risks as well as lifestyle factors and spanned from 2009 to 2019. The wonderful people who agreed to participate agreed to be evaluated several times, including undergoing neuropsych testing four times throughout the study. They looked at different categories of behaviors. One of these was a healthy diet. Another one was being cognitively active. A third was having regular physical activity. A fourth was being social or having social contact. A fifth was never smoking or quitting smoking. And finally, not drinking alcohol. After they accounted for things like how healthy the people were in general and socioeconomic factors, they found that each one of these factors contributed to slowed memory decline over time. But let's talk about the specifics. They grouped people into categories, but people who were in the favorable category meant that they practiced four to six of those lifestyle factors that we just talked about. The people in the average category meant that they practiced two to three of those factors we referenced, and the people in the low category practiced one or two of them, basically not much at all. The results suggest that people who had the favorable lifestyles doing the most of those behaviors had a 90% reduced risk of dementia or mild cognitive impairment. And the people who were average, who did two or three of those activities, were 30% less likely to develop dementia or mild cognitive impairment as compared to people who did very few things. What made me extra happy was it didn't matter if I was in the APOE4 club because the results still applied. Behavior changes risk. So if you're looking to be specific, a healthy diet was the number one contributor to staving off dementia. This was followed by being cognitively active and then by being physically active. So let's start today. I have playlists on all of those categories. So if you want inspiration, please check them out. They're in the links below. But if you don't wanna watch more videos, let's just start right now. What is one thing that you do that you're proud of that fits into those categories of behaviors that can stave off dementia? For me, I try really hard to eat a green leafy vegetable every day. I love the research that says green leafy vegetable eaters, they followed them over 10 years and people who ate them most days compared to people who didn't had a brain that looked 11 years younger. That is so spectacular to me. So whether I'm making my salad for lunch, which I do try to do, or throwing in a handful in our pasta sauce at night and the kids don't even realize it, or sometimes I'll just grab a bag of spinach and have a couple bites because it makes me feel like I did something. You know, what's one thing that you do that you can share with the rest of us? Let's inspire each other. 
then what's a thing that you wish you were doing or something that you'd really like to change? And let's start small. You know, I used to, before kids, I had the luxury of working out almost every day. It felt good, I loved it, and I could do it. I had the time and the resources and the energy. With kids, with work, with YouTube channel, with life, blah, 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 every excuse in the book. I'm down to about three days a week. I still feel good about that, I do exercise, but I want to incorporate more. So my idea and goal is to throw in a walk on my long work days and I can get outside and walk for five, 10 minutes and you know call it good. What's one thing that you would like to change that you would like to incorporate? Please share it with us because the more we do it together, the more successful we'll be. So thank you for listening and sharing this cool research with me. There are so many things we can do. Let's baby step together to reduce our risk and just feel better now. So many of these activities not only have a benefit for the future, but they make for a healthier lifestyle and a better quality of life. So I'll see you in the next one.